Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can integrate some of Azure's AI services inside of our application. Specifically, we're going to implement an AI filter such that hateful or violent speech uh, will not be allowed inside of the chat. Uh, so this is just the finished product that I'll show right here before we get started. Uh, if we have a message like this, then we're broadcasting to a room. It works fine. It says, I like you. So if we change this to something that the filters should recognize as being hate speech, uh, we should get uh, the message back that this speech is not allowed. So the broadcast doesn't work. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can get started with this. The filter is going to be built using Azure's cognitive service called Content Safety. You can simply search for Content Safety up here. I already have one provision called the Toxicity Filter right here. You can always just provision a new one by clicking Create. So let's just fill out a basic form here. Uh, pick a subscription and a resource group. Uh, pick somewhere in the world that's not too far from where you are. Give it a name, like a chat filter, and then take a pricing tier. So right now I already have one free tier. I can't have multiple free tiers because otherwise you could circumvent any kind of uh, payment by just having a gazillion free tiers. Uh, so I'm not going to provision this one, uh, but for you it's going to say free. And then you review it here and then you click create. Uh, I'm not going to click create because I already have one provisioned. So I'm going to go back to the one I provisioned previously. It's this one called Toxicity Filter here. So the way you get started with this is that you need to find your API keys. You can find them right in here. Uh, so you have two keys and the way it works is that you can show the keys. Right now I'm showing them and there is a copy button out here. Uh, it's not a big deal that I'm showing the keys because you can always just regenerate the keys. Uh, so I'm going to regenerate some of these uh, after the video. So even though you see them right now, you can't do anything with them. Uh, the location is really important and the endpoint is really important. So you should just copy these to your clipboard so you can always find them later. There is, of course, some documentation to getting started. If you click the overview here, uh, they have something called Content Safety API Reference and also something called the Studio. Um, it's pretty well made actually, uh, but I'm going to also show you what can you do even if you don't have this nice documentation they have right here. So specifically the one that we're going to be using is uh, analyze text here. So uh, analyzing text, you can figure out, okay, is a message considered to be hateful speech or whatever. Uh, and they give you the endpoint that you must request here. So you fill in your own value here and you can fill in a version of the API. And then you fill in the subscription key and uh, the text along with some other stuff. So down here they have a sample. This is basically how your JSON is going to look in the request body. And then there's going to be a, a sample output here. And they are even so nice to give you a, a, a some code snippets down here. So what do you do if the uh, documentation doesn't include code snippets like this? but you want to be able to end up with some code. I'm going to show you how you can bridge uh, that gap. So almost all of their services, they have some kind of open API specification. So this is what we in normal speech refer to as Swagger. And Swagger pages, they can be marked up by JSON or YAML. So if you have uh, some markup like this, this for instance is uh, Azure's computer vision API. So you can take a look at images and analyze these with AI. You can copy this uh, gigantic JSON here, and then you can throw it into a Swagger editor. And then it generates the Swagger page to analyze images with the computer vision API. Um, and of course, they have a ton of different APIs. So this one is on the repository Azure REST API specifications. And uh, the one that we're going to find is just called the uh, content safety because that is the service name is content safety. Uh, and mind you that, that there's so much in here that you should probably uh, look through. Are there multiple content safeties? Uh, this is actually the one that we're interested in using. Uh, so there is a stable version. And the version name is uh, the date of release. Uh, so please take note of that. Uh, just copy the uh, Swagger definition here, put it in here, 
Um, and what we're going to do now is uh, click authorize here. So by clicking authorize, we get a little menu to put in the API key that we got from Azure. So it's um, this one here. Copy the uh, key, put it in here. I know you can see it, but I'm going to rotate it um, close. And uh, let's uh, analyze some text now. Before you start sending any requests, the important thing is to figure out where is it going to be directed towards. Generally, the API specifications, they include the base URL, but they cannot quite figure out what your personal base URL is. So it's important that we also copy our endpoint here. So click copy here. And uh, in Swagger, um, the key inside of the markup is it going to be host and now it's going to be a string value uh, and you don't have to specify the protocol and just for good measure uh, this is also what they write here in their documentation they also have other documentation on uh, microsoft docs for this azure cognitive services this is really just one of their many documentation pages but we pasted in the endpoint that we have and then we have to um, go to content safety. So this is a relative address. And uh, when you click the try it out here, uh, you get to fill in all of the values. So the version was just 2023.10.01. Uh, and then there is like an example body here. Um, I'm just going to use a very basic example. So some of these values I don't really care about. Um, the way that the uh, endpoint works is that you insert uh, the string that you want to analyze here. So if you have some potentially hateful speech like I hate you, you can analyze based on some categories. So one of them is hate, another one is violence. Um, you can find all of the categories in uh, the documentation and uh, the output type is going to tell us on a scale of one to four how sure is it that this falls into these categories here? So uh, right now we get the, the result back. Mind you that even if you do get uh, like a syntax uh, problem here, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with it. This is really just uh, the swagger editor that's saying, oh, maybe this is a problem. Clearly, it's not a problem. We're getting a successful response body here. Uh, so it's saying that this is a, looks like it's a hate speech, right? But it's not violent. But we can try and change that to write something that is uh, definitely violent. Uh, I kill you. Uh, I hope uh, this video doesn't get taken down. Um, and it is definitely violent to say, I will kill you. Um, and... Uh, what can you do from here to bridge the gap between having a request that is successful and having c -sharp code inside of your application? The easiest way you can do it is pretty much just copy the curl command and then just finding a curl to c -sharp HTTP client converter because curl is just an HTTP client so you can translate this into the syntax of other HTTP clients. Um, so here is the C Sharp HTTP client equivalent of doing what we just did. So we're going to use this inside of our program. And um, just to note, if you don't find the Swagger definition of the service that you're looking for inside of this repository here, there surely are other places on the web where you can find it. So for instance, I found something called API Guru and they have a ton of Azure Cognitive Services in here as well. So anyways, let's uh, take uh, all of this lovely C-sharp code that we have here, and uh, let's go into uh, the um, class that is responsible for broadcasting a message. So right here, we're interested in figuring out, is the DTO that contains the message here a toxic message? And uh, we're specifically interested in figuring out is it violent or is it hateful? And then we will just uh, not broadcast it and maybe send a message back to the user and say, okay, this is, uh, this is something you can't say. Uh, so 
the easiest way is probably just to make a private method here private uh, async uh, task verify message or uh, is message toxic and um, paste in this uh, lovely code here and uh, I'm gonna just put the message in as a string here as so a string message and now we have to modify this right here uh, they also put two import statements in the snippet that I didn't copy so I'll just copy these here uh, mind you this might be a slightly older syntax than the modern syntax you might find but it's uh, still perfectly valid Uh, so this here is what we're interested in changing right now. Uh, currently, it's a, really just a, a JSON that is formatted as a string. So uh, I will go into a Swagger where I wrote the original message here. I'll just make uh, three different keys in an anonymous object and then I'll paste in some values. So you can of course make a class that is modeling this object uh, that that will be pretty easy um, but i think the easiest way to just do it quickly is just ma make an anonymous object here bar request new and then you write text uh, which is the message and then you write uh, categories uh, which is new list of string uh, with the values hate violence um, and then the last one is output type here and output type uh, you just put it to a uh, four severity levels string severity levels so uh, I'll just copy to make sure that this is exactly what I wrote So now we have a nice anonymous object. Um, just put this in, JSON, serializer, serialize, request. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so right now, when we're getting uh, the response back, we're just getting a string back. Uh, we're not really interested in working with a string. So if we want to have like an object uh, that has some properties, we can also make a class for that. So just like you can make a class for this, um, the fast way of doing it is just uh, to name type request uh, model. And uh, now you have a request model. Uh, so it just puts it in here. It's a record, uh, but you can make it into a class type if you want to do that. The uh, response type, uh, I would actually take the response type from the documentation. So the documentation we had in here, they had these little samples. Uh, you can take a sample like this and then just uh, JSON to C sharp class um, accept convert it here yes yes consent uh, convert this and now you have a perfectly valid uh, class object if you don't have uh, the nice documentation like this what you can still do is just take whatever it's outputting here uh, and then just turn that into uh, the class object I think this should translate to the exact same object. Um, just a slightly uh, more simplified one actually, because we didn't require all of the same content that was capable of being produced by the API. Uh, so just put these models inside of your C-sharp code. Uh, instead of calling it root, I'm gonna call it content filter response. Uh, and instead of using a string here, we're gonna deserialize this to a C sharp object. So var objects uh, JSON serializer deserialize diamond brackets to content filter response and put in the response body here. Um, so now you have things like the categories analysis and the block list match. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is say if the categories analysis uh, has one or more objects with severity over one, um, then it is definitely toxic. So var is toxic. So you can, of course, just um, change this to however you want it to be. So if you want it to be very sure that it, is, it definitely is toxic speech, then you should, of course, uh, set the severity higher, like two or three or whatever. Uh, I'm going to just uh, go a little conservative here. Uh, so you can say if is toxic, throw new validation exception. Uh, such speech is not allowed. You could send back the entire analysis to the client and say, okay, this is how we interpreted your message, uh, but I'm going to just uh, go with this. One thing you also should be doing is uh, making an environment variable for... Um, your uh, key up here. Uh, so this is just so you don't leak all of your keys to your public source code. The URL here, you can also change that because the toxicity filter endpoint here is dependent on what you named your service when you provisioned it on Azure. Um, so you, you could have multiple uh, environment variables here, um, but I'm going to just uh, go back to whatever I had before. So the idea is that you throw in a validation exception if the analysis is that it is toxic speech. We can just trigger this up here. Um, this is message toxic dco dot message and it's an async method so we'll just await. We don't really have to uh, do anything with the result right now because this is not returning a value. It's just performing a task and then it's throwing a validation if it is toxic. So what's going to happen once the uh, exception is thrown? Well, we're going to get to our exception handler. So if we go back to our program CS file where everything starts, this is where we're supposed to actually handle it. So if we want to send something back to the client, that submitted the message, uh, we should, of course, use the WebSocket connection here and then send something back to them. Um, I'm uh, going to create a class here that is just responsible for modeling the uh, error message to the client. Uh, public class server sends error message to client extends base DTO you can put in a message like the uh, error message, uh, which is just a public string get set and uh, create a new object, which you then serialize into a text object. New server sends error message to client and put in the um, exception message so currently the exception message is just gonna be whatever we put into the string when we make a new validation exception here we have postman connect to the server and uh, first i'm gonna sign in here then i'm gonna enter a room and uh, first we're gonna just test that a message that uh, i don't consider to be toxic surely should not be toxic. So uh, this works. Uh, we get a broadcast back. Um, this is what all clients in the room get. Uh, hey, buddies. And now is the moment of truth. If I uh, write something that I consider to be a hateful speech, I hate you. Click send. So we are correctly triggering the Azure Cognitive Service to make content filtering inside of our chat. 